Hey, Mr. P here. In this video, we're going to talk about insects and decomposition. So go through the phases of decomposition, talk about insect anatomy, talk about insect activity, and really talk about all of the stages of insect development um, tied to or alongside the stages of decomposition because they definitely both can relate. Let's go. So the first thing we have to do is identify the stages of decomposition. Um, now, in the class, we obviously are going to be witnessing um, the stages of decomp, but there are five stages of decomp that we need to be familiar with. The first stage is called fresh. It basically is the body's changing environment after it shuts down. Um, all of the organs stop, the, the heart stops beating, um, all of the internal oxygen contents will drop, cells begin to die, stable temperatures are no longer maintained, no immune system regulating microbes normally um, that normally live inside the body. Um, all of those are going to start proliferating in the body, start building populations. They're going to grow exponentially because they are growing unchecked. And all of these things that are happening are happening internally inside the body. But while all of those things are happening inside the body, flies will immediately find uh, a dead body and will start laying the eggs in the openings or orifices of the body like the ears, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, etc. Okay, so there is a lot of microbial activity happening inside the body, bacteria proliferating, um, large bacteria numbers increasing. There's also flies uh, laying eggs on uh, kind of in the openings of the body on the exterior. So there's going to be exterior insect activity as well as internal microbe activity. The depletion of the oxygen inside the body is going to help the microbes and the bacteria create an anaerobic environment. Um, all of the carbohydrates, fats, proteins of the body are going to be quickly metabolized by those anaerobic microbes or those anaerobic bacteria. They're going to start producing byproducts of carbohydrate uh, digestion which is methane, ammonia sulfide, or hydrogen sulfides, all of these gases are going to accumulate inside the body and are going to blow the body up in a state we call bloat. Um, nothing exteriorly happens to the pig in this case. Um, there may be some maggot activities. There may be some insect eggs um, or fly egg activity. But all of the bloating comes from the gases that are accumulating inside the body, which are the result of anaerobic bacteria metabolism. After the bloat stage, we're going to go into active decay or active decomp. This is eventually um, what happens as a result of bloat kind of exceeding the capacity of the skin. Typically, bloat will cause the, or the accumulation of gases will cause the body to rupture. When the body ruptures, that obviously opens up the body to further insect activity. So you'll have more insect eggs developed or deposited. You'll have more active feeding of the, uh, the larva. But this is where the, the active decomp or the active decay, all of the insect activity eating the, the insides of the uh, the body advanced decay is you have fungus or fungi are going to start coming in those are obviously decomposers um, not only are the insects and the bacteria working to advance the decay or the decomposition but you also have fungus in there as well and eventually you get to a point where we call dry remains where there is no flesh or soft moist component it is just dry skin dry remnants of skin and bones. We call that dry remains. Okay, so we go fresh to bloat to active decay to advanced decay to dry remains. This all can happen really relatively quickly. It also can happen over a long period of time. It really depends on the size of the body and temperature and environmental conditions that the body is in. So one of the first organisms to colonize a body is called a blowfly, um, sometimes called bottle flies. These are the flies that can sense or detect the odors that are emitted from a freshly deceased body. Um, and they can detect those odors from over a mile away. So if there is a blowfly within a mile of a freshly deceased body, it will be detected and will be colonized within minutes. 
Okay, these bottle flies are among the first insects to arrive on a body and can be very useful in determining the PMI. We've talked in, in past videos about PMI, that's the post-mortem interval. These flies are really, really important in helping us determine what that PMI is. As bacteria start to decompose the tissue, two gases, putrescine and cadaverine, are released that alert the blowfly to a possible location to lay their eggs. Again, these are the odors that are produced by bacteria on decomposing bodies that alert these flies to a corpse, which is where these flies need to lay their eggs. The adult fly uses its siphon-like uh, siphon -like proboscis, which is its mouth parts, to suck up the protein-rich fluids from decomposing bodies. Now, one of the important things to note is that the decomposing body is being decomposed by bacteria. The bacteria are producing these fluids, which are rich in proteins. The flies are coming in just to suck up these fluids with this proboscis. Okay? If you look at the ventral side of the proboscis, you can see that it almost looks like lips. There is a tube, um, like a straw-like structure, that's going to go up into the mouth or up into the head of the fly through this, this mouth part called a proboscis. Okay. Fortified with extra protein, the female flies deposit their eggs in clusters on the body. Usually they are clusters of 50 eggs. They're usually in natural openings such as the mouth, nose, ear, wounds, etc. Okay. The flies want to lay their eggs in a spot on the body that is conducive to maggot feeding. They don't just randomly lay the eggs on the skin, they want to get them into the body. The soft, moist tissue of the body will provide food for the larva or the maggots. Okay. And once the flies deposit the eggs, they're going to then develop through the complete metamorphosis, which is basically this picture. Okay, so the first thing that happens is the eggs, which are roughly two millimeters long and white, are laid within an hour of death by the adults. They usually hatch within 24 hours of being laid, and they are found in all of those war moist, warm areas of the body, like the eyes, mouth, nose, and any wounds that may have happened. Okay? They develop into first instar larvae. These first instar larvae are going to be 5 millimeters long. They're still going to be white. They show up within 1.8 days of death, and they last about 20 hours in this stage. So if they show up roughly one and a half days um, after death and they develop for about 20 hours you can see that this stage you're you know if you have flies in this area or in this stage you're looking at two ish days two and a half days um, after death they have black mouth hooks are visible on the anterior side they have a very thin body because they haven't been feeding very long and they have one spherical slit near the anus which we'll talk about in the next slide Okay, the second instar larva is going to be roughly 10 millimeters long, so they are double in size, they're still white, they show up about 2.5 days after death, and they last about 15 to 20 hours in this stage. They still have their black mouth hooks, but now a dark crop can be seen on the interior dorsal side, and they feed actively, and they have two spherical slits near the anus, which is uh, increased from 1 to 2. The second instar larvae are going to develop into the third instar larvae. They are now 17 millimeters long. They are white. They show up within four to five days of death, and they last roughly 36 to 56 hours in this stage. So now we're talking a week-ish into the, the body, uh, or a week after death. They have black mouth hooks, which are still visible on the anterior side. They have a crop that is not visible. It's covered by fat deposits now. They have a fat body, they have three spherical slits near the anus, again we're going to talk about what that is in a minute. Once the third instar larvae are um, done developing in this stage, they're going to pupate, which means they're going to form pupa. They are nine millimeters long in this stage, they are cream colored to begin with, but they change to really dark brown through the end of the pupa stage. They show up within eight to twenty-four days and last roughly six to twelve days in this stage. They are immobile, which means they do not feed, they do not move, they are basically cocooned, and they change to dark, dark brown with age. As they develop into more adult-sized flies, they will continue to get darker and darker. The balloon, which is the cocoon, is going to inflate and deflate, kind of like cyclical, inflate, deflate, inflate, deflate, to help split the open, uh, or split open the pupa case, 
prior to the adult emerging. And then you have adult flies. The adult flies can vary in size depending on how old the adult fly is. They are typically black or green and they show up within 21 to 24 days after death and they can last several weeks in this stage. They are incapable of flight for the first few hours. And so it is important to know, are these flies that have pupated or ha have completed their metamorphosis on the body or are these flies that have shown up just within the first few hours? Okay. So let's go into a little bit more about this um, larva anatomy. The first thing we want to look at is the actual larva itself. The front or anterior end of the larva, uh, larva is slendered. Notice you have kind of a fatter end and you have a slendered end. The slendered and tapered end is actually the front. It has two black hooks that enables them to dig and scrape at a decomposing flesh or a decomposing body. It also helps them move the flesh and the decomposing body or the decomposing tissue towards the mouth. It's really, really good or convenient for them to live this way and to feed in groups. One, because they kind of have strength in number, but two, they are able to eat and breathe at the same time, okay? They eat out of this end and they breathe out of this end. So what is the thing or what is the structure that allows them to breathe? They have on their posterior or rear end of the larva is a rounded, kind of rounded end that contains two rounded structures called spiracles. These spiracles can be seen here if you look at the end. Each of them has a series of spiracle slits that are used for breathing. These are essentially the lungs, and so why that is beneficial, which I talk about here, is that when they are eating in masses, they actually can bury this head into the decomposing tissue, and they can just continuous, continuously eat while they continuously breathe out of this end. Okay, so respiratory gases are going to be exchanged on this end. They're going to also be eating out of this end. Really, really good for them uh, in terms of an adaptation. As food is ingested, it passes into the maggot's crop. It's a temporary holding tank for the larva's food and no digestion occurs here. You can see the crop is increasing in size as it goes from first, second, third instar. Again, you can only see typically the crop on the second instar. Once you get to the third instar, you can't see it because it's covered in fat. But it's really important to note that we can actually harvest tissue okay from a, a a larva's crop and we can analyze it for not only dna but we can also analyze it for toxins and drugs um, the second instar larva it is possible to see the crop this is the location where all of the digested material will be kept temporarily before digesting um, again though that in the third instar the crop is no longer visible due to the addition of body fat acquired by the third instar stage they are substantially bigger and so that means the crop is actually deeper inside the larva than it was in the second instar okay so second instar um, or we talk through kind of this instar development the cuticle or the outer covering of the larva does not grow with the maggot which means the maggot has to shed the cuticle it's called molting in favor of a new one. So the larva will actually molt its covering called the cuticle between its first instar, second instar, third instar stages. As it is molting, it will enter third instar. And so towards the end of the third instar, the larva stops eating, empties its crop, and begins to move away from the decomposing flesh, sometimes crawling several feet in search of a dry, dark area to pupate. They no longer need to eat. They've reached kind of the maximum size in order to pupate. The thick skin of the third instar larvae is not shed at this point. It is going to harden into a pupil case. Not only will it harden into the pupil case, it actually gonna kind of constrict itself and become smaller and compressed. It slowly darkens, changing from white to a light golden brown and then to a really dark brown in its pupil case. And once it has completely packed itself into the pupil case, it will continue to develop into an adult fly as a pupa. And you can see that it progresses through these different stages before emerging as an adult fly. An empty pupil case can provide evidence that a body has been in an area long enough for the blowfly to complete its entire life cycle. This would be an example of that empty pupa case. 
And so if you find these pupa cases or these empty cases, you can tell that the complete metamorphosis life cycle of this bottle fly has happened. And that's a pretty good indication that it has been a while since the body was, was ultimately deposited in that location. Okay, a couple of the other types of flies that are indicative of a dead body or a, or a decomposing body would be house flies, flesh flies, and coffin flies. House flies are a little bit smaller than blowflies. They're typically not associated with the same types of food items. They also have a different external um, appearance. The house fly, as you can see in this picture, has a gray thorax with four dark longitudinal stripes. They'll typically have a stripe here, one, two, three, and then another one on the other side. So it's a gray thorax with four distinct black stripes. They are typically going to eat things um, as food sources like sugar, sweat, blood, urine, and feces with a kind of underlying uh, or underlying urine urine and feces these are not like flesh flies and bottle flies in that they eat decomposing flesh they typically are going to be associated more strongly with urine and feces which can indicate certain things that we'll talk about in a minute um, although these house flies are normal or common in households they also can be indicators of abuse because they are attracted to urine and feces, and typically if a person is kept in an abusive situation, they will typically deposit urine and feces on either themselves or the environment that they're in, and the, the houseflies will help kind of point out those, those areas um, as they are kind of um, attracted to that particular substance. Flushflies look a lot like um, houseflies, but they are a medium-sized fly. They too... Um, are grayish with some black bands, but they actually have a checkered board abdomen, um, which you can see in this particular picture. They often arrive within minutes of a um, deceased individual or, or of a death, and instead of laying eggs like the other types of flies that we've talked about do, they actually deposit living larvae onto the flesh directly without the egg stage which kind of jump starts their metamorphic life cycle um, by putting the larva directly onto the flesh that they, the larva ultimately will consume. Coffin flies are tiny. They are much more resemblant of a fruit fly. They are attracted to flesh much like the other flies are, um, but they can be an indicator of a body that has been really tightly wrapped um, in a blanket or a tarp or whatever, but they also can help um, identify whether or not a body was trying to be concealed or whether somebody was trying to conceal a body because they will be the only ones that are small enough to actually get to the body. And so if you see um, coffin flies or a dead or deceased individual within kind of a, an accumulation of these coffin flies, it can be an indication that the body was probably wrapped um, in something. They are about the size of fruit flies. And these are the types of flies that were actually um, kind of part of that Casey Anthony murder trial. Dr. Haskell observed evidence of these coffin flies in the trunk of the car, indicating that a dead body um, had to have been in the trunk for a while and was probably tightly wrapped in some kind of material because of the fact that these coffin flies were the flies that were in there. Okay. Some other beetles and decomposers that are players within crime scenes and dead and decomposing bodies would be the follows. Um, clown beetles arrive on bodies early on in the decomp and they actually feed on fly eggs and maggots. So we know that flies will often show up onto a, a body within minutes and actually can lay their eggs within an hour. These beetles come in and will start feeding on the fly eggs, and then as those eggs hatch, we'll start feeding on the fly larvae. Those are called clown beetles. Carry-on beetles arrive on a body early and also fly uh, or feed on fly eggs and maggots. It's just a different form of body, a uh, different form of beetle, but have the same relatively you know, similar lifestyle. Sexton beetles arrive during fresh to advanced decomposition and feed on maggots, probably more uh, indicative of like first, second, and third instar larva. Hairy rove beetles arrive during fresh to advanced decomposition and feed on maggots. Again, first, second, and third instar larva. 
And then you have hide beetles, which arrive during advanced decomposition and actually feed on dried remains. So depending on what type of insect, both flies and beetles, you can actually start to put together a timeline on exactly how long the body's been there based on the insects that are colonizing the body and based on how long we know those insects take to get to the life cycle or the life stage that they are observed in. If you have any questions, bring those to class. See ya.